Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Chum Chat. It's your boy, Johan Gomez, back with my co-host, Tanner Tessman. Yeah. He's scored for Gomez. He's in six eight goals. And Johan Gomez makes the 1 Tanner Tessman, the 20-year-old from FC Dallas. So, so let's get into this thing. Um, I, I'm very interested always when not players who are retiring decide to start a podcast because everybody's doing that. Herc's, Herc's, you know, one of many examples. Uh, but when guys who are in the game decide to start a podcast. So uh, explain to us first kind of where this idea came from. Tanner, I know your, your relationship goes way back, right? You guys have been boys since like FC Dallas Academy days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We uh we started playing in the academy since I was fourteen, so that was like U fifteens, I I believe, and yeah, we started playing together um every day, being together in the locker room, uh, building a good relationship. But the podcast idea really started our our uh, last year together. We went to uh, when we made our run to the finals, and um yeah, we we were talking and you know we're funny and and we have big futures ahead of us and we have good connections, so we we thought it was possible to to do a podcast and. You know, it was for fun, but then we kind of took it serious and, and came up with a good name and, and also a good, like, story behind it. And I think it's doing, you know, well for us. So it's not something we put too much effort into, but it's, it's a good time. Yeah, you, you, you guys are boys, right? So Sebi and I are boys, and we often, like, pretty much every single day we have a production meeting, are getting in an argument, a fight over what we want to talk about. How do you guys choose what you want to talk about and how you want to go about it? I don't know. We we've always kind of seen eye to eye on that kind of thing. I think we just we talk about it a little bit. It's not much of an. I don't think we've ever had an argument about what we're going to talk about. I mean, Tan, trust me. If I say that we're going to talk about something, and I trust him, if he says that we need to talk about something, so I get if he gets a guest on, I'll let him take the lead on it. And if I get a guest on, I'll take the lead on it, and he'll kind of you know sit in the back seat. So that's the way. That's our dynamic, and it, it works pretty good, I think. Yeah. So I, I like the episodes when you get the guests on, right? That's cool. But my favorite episodes are the ones that I've heard of Chum Chat are are when it's just you guys, right? Because then you're kind of taking us inside the national team, inside the locker room. Um, tell me, Tanner, how do you guys draw the line between um, what you want to say and what you can publicly say? It's tough. And I'm sure you guys know it's tough, um, but especially as like current footballers, it's tough to say, you know, a lot of these uh, podcasts you see with retired players, they're able to dive into these stories about when they were in the locker room or the coach or different things. And we can't do that. You know, we can't we can't dive in too much about about how we're doing. And, you know, we don't want to give too much away to the public and the media. So uh, there will be a time. I think me and John both know there will be a time uh, in the future where we get to talk about our, our true experiences and, and and everything we've have done in football. But uh but no, I mean we we try to we try to keep it as clean as possible and you know talk about things that, that motivate both of us and that we want to hear about and that we enjoy talking about. So I guess that's the, the best way we do it. Tanner, you've already gotten a taste of the national team. My question here is for Johan. Johan, you actually have a choice of two national teams. Um has there any has there been any contact from the Mexican national team, from the US men's national team about your future, about where you're leaning to, about what you're thinking? I'd say there has been a little bit on, on both fronts. Um, obviously, I haven't debuted with anything as Tanner, uh, as you said about Tanner, but um, obviously you have the Olympics coming up. Not coming up, but that's the cycle that I'd be a part of, uh, whether with U.S. or Mexico. Um, you know, there hasn't been anything too strong, but I know that, you know, Mexico definitely is tracking my progress, as is the U.S., but um, that's all I've heard from yeah, either federation so far. You know, Tanner seems like a, like a great guy, and he seems like he knows you very well, Johan. But do you often think like maybe there are other teammates, other fans, other sectors that don't understand just how difficult maybe the decision is for you and will judge you no matter what? Oh, 1,000 percent. I know sometimes it's inevitable to see some certain comments um, that you get uh, from the U.S. side just as the Mexican side. So you can't really say, oh, I'm going to choose this country because they don't bash me much you know hmm. you know i see when a mexican outlet pl uh, post about me and my brother they call us like bochos or whatever like they call us americans yeah. and and when 
when something comes out in American outlet talking about, oh, he's considering Mexico, it'd be like, oh, we don't want him because he's not fully committed to us. You know what I mean? So I kind of think the other day, it's kind of like what it's seen for a minute. And it kind of seems like it's going to be that way. You know, if, mm. if you choose one country and you do badly, like they'll just say, oh, it's because he's American. If I go with Mexico or if I go with America, maybe they say I don't feel the colors. You know what I mean? So it definitely is a tough choice that not a lot of people understand. But at the end of the day, I think um, whatever, you know, whatever any Mexican-American or dual national chooses, he does it with his whole heart. Just know that. So I want to get into your kind of careers and like respective spots where you are, because you're both kind of different moments of your of your trajectories. Uh, Tanner, start with you. Uh, Syria, Venezia, like how how would you rate your year so far? Uh, that's tough. Um, coming here, you know, it was the goal for me personally was to play as much as possible, and I've and I've played in a lot of games. I've started a few games, and I want to start more games, and I want to be getting more minutes. But I think uh, overall, it's been a great experience and. And I, I've been doing well, um, better than others thought I would have, and better than you know, <laughs> some people might think. But um, I think the goal for our team is definitely to stay up, obviously, and uh, we're not doing that right now today. So that aspect, of, we need to we need to pick it up. And I think the boys are motivated and, and ready to, to to go to battle. I mean, we have tough games ahead, but um, so far, personally, it's been a solid year. But you know, it all depends what happens on decision day. So, Johan. First of all, you gotta help me pronounce the name correctly. What, where, how do you pronounce where you are? Tvicko. The, the W is like a V. So, so tell us really quickly about what FC Tvicko is like and what where you are, the level. What's that like, and what's the transition from being a homegrown in Major League Soccer into the European uh, setup? I went academy of, to, uh, to the academy of Porto um, two years ago, three years ago, almost now, and obviously it's a huge jump. Um, you know, playing with their 19s and then now. Last year playing with the B team and and playing out of position and just the whole European thing was just so new to me, obviously with COVID coming in. Um, so that was tough, obviously, you know, just fighting for your spot. There's not a lot of patience. Um, I thought I did well with with uh, what I had, but I you know, the minutes that I got and stuff like that. But I, I figured that it was time for a new challenge and I feel that I'm a striker. So I wanted to go somewhere that saw me that way. And, um, you know, the third league, obviously, I spoke to Chris Richards about it. He played here with Byron too, and Justin Che also did. So I think it's a great league. It's physical, it's tough, but um, I got a chance. And there's an American coach here, Joe Enox, who uh, has believed in me. And I think uh, thus far, obviously it hasn't been easy at all, um, you know, but you play against big big time clubs definitely here. So I think I'm ready to take the next steps. Johan, do you have any regrets about the decision not to like kind of try the American path? You know, it's it's in the back of your mind at times, you know, when, when things didn't work out at Porto, obviously you think about it. Um, but, you know, I feel like there's, as an American, obviously the MLS, I can't just say that, oh, I can, can and have a spot in MLS, because that's not true. But at the end of the day, I feel in my that it's to go back to your home country, you know, and, and, and work there. If things don't work out here, I feel like I had told myself was, you know, I want to try Europe. Um, if I don't make it, whatever, but I don't want to live with that, you know, what if, you know. So I think at the end of the day, for me, it was the right decision, and I, and I know in my heart that, that I want to be here. You know, Tanner, I, uh, what's it like being an American in Serie A? Have you felt a certain type of stigma? Do you think, like, just because you were an American at Yank, how they considered you, that they think you're, you know, less about the game or aren't as uh, sophisticated about it? I think there's definitely a stigma around it, but once you get on the field and play, I think it, it goes away for the people around you, uh, the teammates, the coaches, and the people that watch. But, uh, you know, it's we're a team and everyone makes jokes and we have we have a good time, so it comes around and, People make jokes about it, and to me and Busio and to the owners or whoever it may be, and but we embrace it, and as well as when we make jokes about them and their pasta or whatever it may be, you know, we they embrace it as well. So it's a, <laughs> what, it's what's a good, the joke it's about the relationship. pasta? <laughs> oh, it's it's every meal. I mean, it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, pasta, pasta, all the time. All right, let's uh, let you guys get one more promo in before we uh, we send you on your way. It's Chum Chat, the podcast. Uh, where can they get it, Johan? And who's going to be some of your next guests? I know you said you didn't want to put about put it out too much, but come on, let's go. It's on Football America. It's on ESPN. There you go. Yeah, of course. I think uh, Ten earlier said we weren't taking it seriously, but I mean, now is the perfect time to lock in. I mean, we have a, a shout out. To, we got a social media manager, everything, all that stuff now. So we're consistent now with it. You guys gotta, yeah, you guys gotta tune in now. You can find it on YouTube, the show, the visuals, but obviously Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, and some of our next guests, I mean, I don't want to say too much, but we always ask our guests who they want to see. So if you guys want to know about our next guest, just look at our, our past episodes and, and maybe you can 
get some hints from there.